interested in the Arctic right now. They're interested in the Arctic in part because of the you know, enormous significance of, of discovering HMS Erebus. There's also uh, interest because of the effects of climate, you know, the, the, uh, the changing climate up there, the impact on wildlife. It's a time, you know, and there's also great uh, uh, commercial potential in the Arctic. It's, you know, there, there's uh, mines being developed, there's future jobs. So it, it's a very interesting uh, um, uh, period for Canada's uh, high Arctic. Geography is key to our to, to, uh, to our work. We have to understand the environment we're working with, which means understanding the landscape, understanding the weather, the conditions, particularly in our case as well, the, the underwater geography or topography. So that, just to operate, you have to know your geography. The challenge of working in the Arctic is more about uh, the logistics of getting there uh, and supporting a, a, a a search or a diving operation, so uh, transporting uh, the personnel and the, uh, the equipment necessary to, to conduct the work, uh, contending with a relatively short operational season, uh, the navigational season uh, in the central Arctic uh, is uh, at the most two months uh, duration, uh, uh, the ice clears maybe early into middle August and then we have uh, uh, some portion of September before the winter conditions really set in. So. Uh, for us, really, the challenge is uh, trying to get as much done uh, as possible over a relatively short uh, window of opportunity. What was really interesting in the case of the Franklin Expedition was that it really required combining physical geography, understanding of, uh, of the processes, um, such as uh, the drift of the ice and, and, and the way it forms and breaks up, together with the human geography with uh, the patterns of, of travel and and uh, what was reported by different explorers and, and Inuit oral, oral history. For six months of the year, from September until March, the ice pack grows and grows and grows and it covers all the Arctic, Baffin Bay, even Hudson Bay, down Labrador and the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And then for the next six months, from March through the spring and summer until September, the ice recedes. And most of these passageways are, are open water or have uh, minimum uh, ice coverage. So this is a process that occurs constantly. What the explorers basically uh, had to deal with is that the only progress they can make is in the summer. And that's what happened to Franklin. His first winter was spent at Beachy Island, and that was on purpose. His second winter was spent near King William Island, and he was trapped by, by a storm in that area probably. And unfortunately, he's had to spend a third winter in the ice just because the ship continued to be trapped. We have to understand their perspective of geography at the time. So that means understanding what they were trying to achieve, what they knew of geography, of their of the uh, ge geography of the environment at that moment, because that's what guided their actions. So it's key for us to understand that. We also need to be able to make the link between the past and the present, understand the, the topography, the toponymy of, of the area, not only from the European perspective, but even most from the Inuit perspective, who somewhere, sometimes you can get clues out of place names. So all of that put together makes that geography is, is really a fundamental aspect of our work.